my pleasure to introduce the uh, the uh, the institute. So I will share my screen so I can start. So yeah, so that really my pleasure to in introduce this new institute because it's kind of, of a new tool that has been created by at Ex Marseille University. So my name is Jerome Rose. Uh, and um, I'm working in, uh, I'm, my background is much more in physical chemistry, environmental sciences, and I'm leading this, uh, this nice uh, institute. So, but b before I, I introduce the institute, I think we need to have a, a brief introduction about what are the institute at Ex-Marseille, uh, at the Ex-Marseille site. And maybe before that, I think we also need to have a, a let's say um, a brief uh, introduction of how the research and the education are organized in France, um, because it's not that simple even for French people. So as in any country, I mean, of course, the research and the education are, I mean, developed and organized at the university level with laboratory for the research, of course, and faculties for uh, implementing and developing all the education. But in France, we have uh, uh, we have some some adding complexity uh, because we have a lot of uh, academic research organization. I'm sure some of you know, of course, the CNRS, one of the biggest, uh, and, and the CNRS is addressing any science. I mean, you, you find an expert in any domain at the CNRS. Uh, also INSERM, which is much more dedicated to uh, medical sciences, for instance, or the CEA, much more devoted to energy or IRD for the international and in high for agronomy. So you have many of that. And and people that belong to this organization also work in uh, laboratories that are shared with universities. So in a sense, we have kind of a um, disequilibrium in terms of human resources uh, uh, for research versus education. So one of the idea that all the, the partner of Ex-Marseille University uh, in, in, in Ex-Marseille uh, area one of the idea was to create this new institute uh, to try to recalibrate in a way the, uh, the human resources between research and education, between lab and faculties. And so to, to position this institute in between lab and faculties to try to um, favor or uh, increase the link between the research and the education. And so institute were created uh, on the site uh, almost two years ago. So very new. And I mean, because it's kind of a new tool, we, we, we start and learn at the same time. So, I mean, we have, we have some, some criteria that we have, we have to develop, but I mean, since it's new, uh, I mean, we learn uh, at the same time as we, as we, as we, we do the, the job. So for all the Institute, we have two main goals. The first, as I mentioned, is really to reinforce or favor the link between, you know, the, 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 the research we are doing now in our lab uh, and education. And the second point, which is really important too, is that all the partners at ex Marseille University, they wanted to have this institute um, with an inter interdisciplinary approach. So to try to really uh, put a lot of emphasis on the, on, on the, the complementarity within the expertise and, and trying to have something really, I mean, kind of a new, a way of doing what we do in terms of research and education. So it's really the, the two main aspects of all the institute that we have uh, to develop. So if you go on the website of Ex Marseille University, you're going to see that we have already 16 uh, institutes from uh, cancer and immunology, for instance, of mathematics or neuro neurosciences or physics of the universe. I mean, so many domains, and two more will be added very soon. So quite large vision of what we can do here at Ex Marseille. So the, now I would like to really go to the item. However, I was not too boring about this introduction. Uh, so item, uh, item is, as I mentioned, we are in between lab and faculty. So in, in our case, item is joining 14 research lab uh, with two colors, meaning two big domain, so very interdisciplinary from social sciences to environmental sciences. And, and, and as you can see on the slide, we have people working in history, plant biology, geochemistry, demography, urban planning, uh, um, plant ecology, sociology. So it's really, really interdisciplinary, which is great. And also very challenging to put all those people around the same table and trying to, to, uh, to help all those people trying to work together. All those in, 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 the, in the 14 labs, we are 
something like 500 people. But among all those people, more than 240 are uh, directly connected to the, to, the, to, the, to the institute. So as I mentioned, the second aspect is, of course, we are connected to faculties. And we are connected to seven faculties. Uh, from Earth and Environment faculty, or Art and Letters, or Management, or Medicine faculty, Science, Law and Political Science. So as you see also in terms of faculty, it's really interdisciplinary. Uh, so the connection we have is really mainly with master program, not, not with the, the, the undergrad. The, the second aspect is that um, we also are connected to a doctoral school. So at, at the, the item, we are connected to four uh, doctoral schools. The main one is uh, environmental sciences with around 50 to 60 PhD per year, which well, uh, we, we reach a total of all, almost 200 uh, PhD students. And as you have seen before, in terms of master student, we, we reach something like 700 or 800 uh, students uh, for the, the two year of the master. And also, of course, we have a lot of connection with industry. Um, I have to say a few words about Mediterranean area because, of course, at Ex Marseille, we are so close to the sea and, and we are really part of this area. Uh, we know that is, this area will be, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know what to say, uh, a very nice laboratory for any. Um, global change because we know that the Mediterranean site will be, I should say, unfortunately, very sensitive to global change. If you see, for instance, the curve of the blue and, and, and the green, those are the uh, mean temperature anomalies that you can see whether on the planet on average or in the Mediterranean area. And as you can see, unfortunately, the increase in temperature will be faster and higher in, in the Mediterranean site compared to the average uh, uh, warming uh, uh, around the planet. So we have other many aspects that are very interesting. Like for instance, in, in Mediterranean area, you have a lot of bio, biodiversity hotspots, which are really threatened by the, uh, the global change. And of course, the urban context is very specific uh, around the, 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 the sea. And of, of course, the history of the people around the, 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 in the different countries is very rich. So we have a very interesting, fortunate, it's fortunate or unfortunate, I don't know what to say, but I mean, it's really an interesting lab. lab. What is your approach about this idea of transition? Of course, I mean, in, in all the country, um, I mean, we, we have a lot of debate and, and of course, also a lot of opposition between group of people and you have many groups we can take, for instance, two that can be um, op op opposed, like the eco-pessimist, for which uh, the future will, is really dark and that we have to, to do a drastic change uh, in terms of the way we live, I mean, in terms of our um, uh, model of society. And even the term uh, sustainable development is not a good term because development is not, I mean, for, for those kind of people, is really not uh, something that we have to continue. Uh, on the opposite, or maybe on, on a very different side, you have people that believe that maybe technology will help to fix many problems that we are facing now, that you can call them the techno-optimism. Of course, you have also many other kind of, you know, uh, group of people that are not sharing the same idea. So uh, at, at the item, we try to take into account all those you know, aspect of the debate position. Uh, and we try with a scientific approach. So with um, benefit and risk of any new idea that, that is proposed to, uh, to, uh, to, to mitigate and, 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 to, and to cope with the global change. Uh, we try to have a, uh, you know, a balanced vision of everything and try to propose some um, uh, uh, scientific uh, answer to, to some of the questions that are, that are very important today. Okay, so the vision we try to develop is not only to uh, is to prevent, to limit, and to adapt to global change and their effect, and so that's really the vision we try to uh, to develop at the, uh, at the at the item. Um, and this transition uh, period, I mean, it's really a, a crucial period because it's a, it's a really a, an opportunity for us in our lab in in our faculties to develop new paradigm and new practices in, in the way we do research and in the way we, uh, we, we teach our students. So that's really a, a nice opportunity. 
And one important point in, our, in, 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 in the uh, environmental area, let's say, is that we have to, to evolve from what we did in the past and we still continue to do, which is a diagnostic. What is a diagnostic of all those global change? What, how do we see those global change? Can we quantify, can we predict? And we have to switch from that, or even if we continue, we have to evolve from that vision of only addressing the diagnostic to try to uh, participate to the debate in terms of what kind of solution we have to, uh, to propose to adapt to, to the global change. So what are the, the, the strengths of our uh, uh, I, I, uh, institute? Of course, the, 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 the first goal of, of the institute are, are the people. Uh, the, the team is really fantastic. We have great experts. They are really committed to uh, to, to work in this in, in this institute and trying to share and, and to combine the multidisciplinary expertise. That's really uh, uh, the, the, the first strength we, we, we have at the institute. We also have a nice and really state-of-the-art uh, characterization platform, like for instance, a national um, uh, particle accelerator, which is called Aster for cosmonuclide isotope measurement, or we also have a nice nano and micro 3D imaging platform for characterizing complex system like uh, plant, soil, um, so many uh, of our, our aerosol. We also have mobile um, state-of-the-art really um, uh, platform for characteriz characteriz characterization of the uh, air quality uh, and many other. And one also very important aspect is that we have, uh, and we are involved in international and national observatory system. Like you see a picture here on the uh, oak tree observatory, a bit northern from, from X, uh, where we have a lot of sensor to, uh, to probe uh, how the, the oak tree forest react to this global change. So that's really an another strength of the, of the Institute. The last one, which was not, um, I mean, it, it was a big, a big challenge because when you, you try to uh, put around the table 14 labs from history to uh, physics to uh, chemistry to biology, and you ask them, okay, we have to create this institute, but what are the priority? Uh, what are the topics we have to develop? Of course, you're going to have a huge list of important topics because there are so many issues uh, in environmental sciences and in the environmental domain. And so one, that was one of the, of the challenge. And what we try to do is to try to uh, focus really on a limited number of axes. Uh, and of course, after a long discussion and, 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 and agreement about uh, for the, of, of all the people, and we developed uh, a, a strategy based on three main axes. The first axis is related to the analysis of socio-environmental changes for this transition strategy. The second one is much more related to the resource management. And the last one is much more related to the risk. Uh, I mean, the, um, all the risks that can, can exist. And on those tri axes, we try to develop a strategy to whether continue to, uh, to fund and to help topics for which we, we have a, uh, a nice visibility at the international level. So that was also important to identify those uh, topics. Um, so we, we, we needed help from outside to, uh, to be sure that we are not on, on the wrong side. And also we try to help emerging topic by strengthening some, some, some subject. And the last one, uh, we try to, to highlight some, some topics that are not really well developed now. And, and we consider that the, the, the Institute need absolutely to be uh, involved in. So for that, we have different tools, funding tool uh, around master, PhD, and postdoc program, or international collaborative program, or mobility program, like in the CVs um, program too, uh, and uh, visiting professor program, and uh, um, uh, integrated the project uh, funding pro program. So if we if we develop all the, the matrix, we have something like nine uh, priority teams from biodiversity to uh, the global uh, bio geochemical cycle of carbon, for instance, or um, multi-contamination or resource recyc recyclability. So you have the, the list of the priority uh, topics we, we aim to develop at the Institute. Of course, another strength is that we have, in addition to CVs, of course, we have a nice international network, uh, whether in Europe, in Africa, or in, in, in North America. Um, with some uh, very important projects that are 
funded not, not, not directly by the Institute, but uh, that are funded by other sources of funding. Um, like for instance, you can see the last one, which is really important. It's uh, uh, the Franco-Tunisia uh, University for which uh, the environmental science is really well developed at the master level. Uh, so that's really a, an, an important uh, project we have uh, with, with Tunisian colleagues. Okay, I can, I can go a bit further. So the point is that when you address um, environmental sciences issues, I mean, they are of course all related to a, a issue in, in terms of societies. And all those issues are kind of complex uh, problem to, uh, to address. And so one of our difficulty is to uh, address this complexity. It's really a big challenge. And of course, how can we implement interdisciplinarity in, in, in at the service of, the, of this complex system? Because it's nice to have a, a, fun, a funding uh, institute, uh, an institute that can fund project, but how do we implement the, 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 the new paradigm? And so the question we had before we started, of course, is how in the lab a colleague can, can take ownership, or ownership of a complex new tool like institute between lab and, and faculties that are known for years and how to create a sense of ownership despite this new complexity because we add a, a new tool uh, to the existing uh, ecosystem uh, in terms of university. And can we contain this uh, increasing complexity in, in, in the administration of, of, the, uh, of the project? So that, that was a, a, a big challenge. And so, of course, if you have a big project with 14 labs, seven faculties, the only way to, uh, to go a step further is really to convince people and to, and, to, uh, and to involve as much as possible colleagues from labs and faculties in, in, the, in the priority we have to define together and the way we want to work together. So initially we organized three days workshops where we really try to organize uh, group by group all the uh, issues that we have to tackle in terms of interdisciplinarity. And of course, all the, the decision we took were based on, on those three days, four days, uh, in terms of uh, priority and criteria we have to apply to select uh, the, the project we, we, we fund. So that's essential to have a, 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 as much as possible uh, a large number of colleagues uh, involved in, in the process. <laughs> I don't know whether it's interesting to, to do it now, but of course, when you talk about in their simply, uh, multidisciplinary or interdisciplinarity, it's, I mean, the debate is, 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 is fascinating because you have many vision. Of course, if we want to address a complex system, we need to have expertise from dif different disciplines. Of course, we need those disciplines and people very good and very, I mean, expert in, in each discipline. But when we want to address this complex system and having a more multidisciplinary vision, of course, we can put everybody together around the table which is the first step to, uh, to address the complex system with a multidisciplinary approach. But then we can maybe continue a little bit to the in, what we can call interdisciplinary, where everybody is much more aware of the uh, discipline of the others and try to take into account the discipline from others into their own uh, reflection, discussion. But where to stop? I mean, do we have to go as far as possible in the interdisciplinary, even in terms of education, or should we stop a step before to keep each disciplinary very, you know, uh, uh, st uh, strong and, and 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 with expert recognized at, at the international level. So that's uh, uh, I don't know whether you you will share or not the, this vision, but that's something we really address in the in the institute before we started any funding or any uh, any pro program. So just to give you one example of uh, two calls, we 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 started in 2020. We have an, an, a second. We had a, a second call uh, a few months from now. Uh, we called the, the call where transition is in, in action, which was a um, the idea of having a, a large project integrating research and education in the same program, and another one which was much more dedicated to uh, to school uh, for for master and PhD uh, students, and so collectively we of course we uh, we defined the criteria for the selection of, of the project. Uh, of course, interdisciplinary is, is on top of the list and the link between training and research is also on top of the list. But of course, because we are uh, item and we are dealing with environmental sciences, uh, we ask the colleagues to try to address one of the nine uh, priority teams that we collectively decide that are really important. And how 
to implement the multidisciplinary is very complex and the, the maybe the, the way the, the the easiest way or the simplest way to do it is to say okay we're going to fund a project in which two labs from two disciplines are co-sharing the vision developing the project together and we're going to fund two or whether two phd or two postdoc one for each lab and that's the simplest way to implement or to start uh, let's say forcing the colleagues to to discuss together uh, in between two disciplines and of course as I mentioned, we had to uh, to, uh, to look at the, 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 the educational program they also developed. So that's how we did. And I will show you what kind of project we uh, we were able to fund. Of course, they started a year from now. So the number of results are not, I mean, will come very soon, but they, they just start to do the research. But I will show you a few examples on how we address this uh, environmental transition. Um, because it's a transition, it's like a, a, a move from one position to another one. And of course, during that transition, we have to test a solution. We have to, uh, to find a um, new paradigm. But what is really interesting is that even if we know where we have to go, we don't know how we can go to that uh, final you know, uh, position in terms of uh, research and education. So that's why it's interesting and, and very challenging. So, I mean, of course, there's many um, topic on which a transition is important. Of course, uh, we have to deal with renew renewable energies or uh, energy efficiency or sustainable water and waste management. So, and many other, I, I just have six on, on the slide, but you, you, you can think about even more than that. And I will show you with a uh, few of those um, uh, um, topic to address uh, what we, we do at ITEM. The first one is uh, the first example I want to show you is related to um, uh, sustainable land use. Um, I don't know whether you know that, but soil is the first terrestrial uh, carbon reservoir. And so if you increase the, this carbon stock in soil, you may be able to compensate at least part of our CO2 emission, fossil CO2 emission. And that's why and how the 4 per 1000 initiative uh, was launched at the COP2021 uh, 20, uh, in Paris. And the idea is to increase the organic content uh, in soil by modifying or implementing appropriate uh, agricultural practices. Uh, so that, that's how the transition is important. I mean, we maybe need to change the way we, uh, we, uh, we uh, work uh, uh, the soil uh, for agricultural purposes. And so, if by doing so, by increasing the organic um, content in soil, we can first contribute to food security by improving soil fertility. You know that the soil fertility is really a big issue because we need to improve the quantity of, um, uh, of uh, um, food production and we need to increase the, the fertility of soil. By doing so, you also adapt agriculture to the climate change because in fact, you can in a way mitigate green, greenhouse gas emission. And so in that big domain, we, uh, we uh, funded two projects. Uh, the first one is called Isocarbon Plus. And the idea of this project is try to stimulate in the continuum from plant to microorganism and mineral from the soil, the storage of carbon in soils. The second one is much more related to the development of testing or comparing new practices for sustainable agriculture and much more on, on the vine, vineyard and uh, domain. The idea is to develop first to test a uh, few biocontrol products and also to develop a new biofertilizer. Uh, of course, the project just started, but I want to show you the, the, uh, the, the fact that those projects are, are not starting from nothing. And for instance, in the case of the, the 4 per 1000, the group is really working on that, on that topic for, for years and they try to address an, a new issue with improving this continuum between plant and soil and, and microorganisms. But, one of the originality of this uh, item approach is that the collects develop a, um, a, a, a vision down to the nanoscale. I mean, they really want to go as, as deep as possible into the characterization of the interaction between the organic matter and the soil mineral. For instance, they in, in, in mineral from that are exist in the soil, the surface can be corroded, like, like corroded. You have an alteration layer, it's generally amorphous. And as you can see on, on, on the figure, the red stuff are the carbon compound. And those carbon compounds are, are intrinsically 
connected to the inorganic um, amorphous layer, the corrod let's say the corroded layer of, of soil mineral. And so what they found is that in fact, the carbon are linked to the iron, aluminum, silicon um, kind of skeleton. And because of this chemical linkage, uh, linkage uh, they, 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 they prove that the carbon is strongly stored in, in, in the soil. But having that in mind, now they want to understand better how this kind of interaction between organic compound and inorganic compound will lead to first increase the storage quantity of, of carbon that can be stored, but also is that carbon um, uh, available for plant and will this carbon uh, participate to the fertility of soil? That, that, those are the questions that they, they want to address now. Uh, so I can go to other examples. For instance, if you think about renewable energies, uh, of course you can imagine that the Mediterranean area has a remarkable potential. For instance, of course, in case of solar energy with sunshine that can vary from, I mean, few thousand hours uh, uh, a year. So it's well, kind of lucky in a, in a sense. But also in many parts of uh, the Mediterranean areas, we have a lot of wind, like in case the case in the south of France with a the strong wind called Mistral. I don't know if you have heard about this strong wind that can, can be very, very intense. And it's the case in, it is the case in many uh, other areas. And so Mediterranean areas, it's kind of a very promising site for renewable uh, energies. But how can those technological solutions be adapted to minimize as much as possible the impact? Because we know the positive impact in terms of CO2 emission, of course, but there are some drawbacks about any technologies. And for instance, I'm sure you know that to produce you those new renewable energy, we need metals, for instance. But to produce metals, we need also energy. And now the energy that is used to produce, for instance, uh, uh, wind turbine is generally coming from non-renewable energy. And if you look at the, um, the needs that we, uh, that, we, that, that, that we have in terms of concrete, steel, aluminum, copper, or glass, just to produce wind and solar installation. Uh, by, two, two, uh, by 2050, it seems that uh, we will need two to eight times the world production that was at the world production in 2010. So it's a huge quantity of those, uh, I mean, very common material that is gonna be uh, needed for, for the, the purposes of renewable energy development. So in a way, we have to take into account that big issue and uh, we have also to improve our um, um, uh, uh, rec the recyclability of material how can we recover uh, uh, resources from from many ways for instance or should we develop new materials so in that case I am uh, starting to work on that uh, topic for instance the IMBE lab uh, starting to look at how photovoltaic panel field uh, can affect, for instance, the biodiversity. Uh, is there any effect or not? Is there any um, solution to minimize the impact on the ecosystem where the, 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 the field are, are, are developed? Uh, is there any, I don't know, a specific um, size of those panels that uh, can be better compared to others? So they, they, they start working on that. Um, if we think uh, to uh, an, another point related to renewable energies is of course uh, the, the issue of battery. Uh, that, that's really the, the tricky point of any uh, wind turbine or, or photovoltaic uh, panel is that we are up to now really unable to store the energy that is produced. And so the development of, of batteries I mean, is, is a common topic for many, many research lab in, in material sciences and in yeah, in material sciences, let's say. The point is that if we don't take into account right now, the fact that we're gonna need to recycle material inside the battery, like for instance, we have all heard about lithium. Uh, I mean, we're gonna face a, a, a big issue. And so uh, with uh, some of our colleagues from uh, Moroccan lab, some lab at the, at the Institute started to, uh, to think about that and they, they, they we didn't fund any project, but they, the, we, we help um, the, the group to, uh, to submit the project at the European Commission to, and, and fortunately we have earned that uh, we, 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 we are going to the second round. So that, that's, that's a good point. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of really long, but I want to show you some other example uh, very quickly. 
sorry. Uh, okay, if you think about uh, greening uh, cities, um, we have a project related to the role of West land and, 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 and we involve students in that, in that topic. Uh, if you think, for instance, of the, uh, the sustainable um, management of waste, uh, there is a little city close to, to Marseille uh, called Gardan, where there is a, 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 a plant that produces for years, and it's, it's an historical industrial site, produce alumina from bauxite minerals. And because of that production, a lot of waste, waste called red mud, uh, were produced during years and years and years. And from for a long time, those red mud were just uh, wasted in, 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 the, in the sea. And now, of course, new solutions try to uh, be developed. And the question of recyclability of those red mud, because in the red mud, you, you can find rare earth elements that can be recovered. And so we found one project that tried to develop bio-inspired technology to the extraction, to try to extract and recover those uh, precious elements. If you think of uh, uh, the energy efficacy, of course, there is a big issue related to the building insulation. And so we also fund a project uh, where we try to develop with a eco-design um, uh, approach, uh, multifunctional paint uh, that has some uh, uh, optical property to uh, uh, reflect the infrared uh, light. And you know, infrared is related to, uh, to Eating and the temperature, so that's that's a way to uh, to increase the uh, insulation of buildings. Uh, but as I mentioned, it's not only research; uh, it's also related to a training student. And we have and we found different uh, schools, like you can call them summer or spring or winter school. I don't know what, what the term to use because they they occur uh, at the several period uh, during the year. But we have, for instance, uh, the Viper uh, School which is addressing a very interesting uh, topic and also related to climate change. It's focusing on the pastoralism in the Alps and with the climate change and with the, you know, the wolves that arrive something like 20 to 30 years in the Alps uh, and the biodiversity that is really challenging by the uh, anthropogenic activities. Uh, the students are really um, facing all those issues and try to better understand this complex interaction between people, uh, the, 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 the farmers uh, and, 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 the, and the regulators. I can give you another example on, on, on one interesting school about the urban and peri-urban Westland, Westlands and the idea is try to uh, understand how this zone uh, can be uh, involved in, in or is there any um, uh, issue related to the biodiversity and how can we manage those, those uh, wasteland uh, in, in the context of trying to green the cities. So with that, I would like to conclude. And so this new tool item, I hope I, I convinced that we, 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 we are federating a lot of colleagues to have this interdisciplinary community with high potential. We also try to develop a, uh, let's say, a res resilient thinking approach uh, based on this interdisciplinary uh, community. We also try to offer an international uh, training program. Of course, it's starting, so uh, I hope that in two or three years from now, we're going to have many other examples to, uh, to show. And of course, as you have understood, uh, we will focus not all the research and the education, but most of what of our effort around the Mediterranean space, uh, because it's really an important, let's say, laboratory for us. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, of course, now I'm, I'm ready to, to answer. Thank you very much, Sharon, for this very interesting presentation of the ETEM Institute. I really like the smoothie image, especially at lunchtime. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> but uh, I see we have a lot of questions actually in the chat, uh, particularly for uh, Kevin Noon. I don't know if you want to ask your questions directly or Maybe you, I can. Sure, thanks, Julie. Um, Jerome, I couldn't stop myself from, from writing a whole bunch of questions. This is very, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations on this new institute. Um, you're, you're doing things that, that, there are, that few others are, um, and it's quite exciting to, to watch you guys. So I guess uh, maybe I'll put two of the questions together. Um, one of them was, was 
the focus area. So I, I mentioned that the American Geophysical Union has a new strategic plan and, and its first goal is to catalyze both discovery and solution science. And, and I was wondering the degree to which this new institute has a focus on solution science. It sounds like that focus is quite clear, but I just wanted to, to ask you a little bit more specifically about that. And then the, the other two bits were, you're doing something very new. Uh, and oftentimes when you break new ground like you, you are, then there's going to be opposition by, by at least some of the people that, that were part of, of establishing the old ground. Um, and I was wondering what, what level of support and opposition did you experience when you, as you were doing this and, and how did you convince uh, people to, to actually take a leap uh, and do something new? So I'll stop there. But um, thanks again for a wonderful presentation. This is very exciting. Thank you, Kevin. So for the first question about the, the solution, development of solution, I mean, you're right, because even in, in, inside the, the group, inside the team, we have some kind of opposition between people saying, no, 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 we don't have to go to that development of new material, for instance, for uh, an, renewable energy or insulating uh, buildings. Uh, we have to, to change the way uh, we behave, in, in fact. And so this kind of research is not for us. And some of us say, no, no, we have to contribute because uh, we know some natural material coming from geology or biology or are really, really interesting because they, the impact on the environment will be very uh, um, smaller compared to other material that are made from, from, I don't know, oil, for instance. And so th th there is a debate inside the, inside the group. I think now we have kind of a consensus that uh, we try to find the two types of ideas that of course, we have to uh, uh, to develop maybe new paradigm, new way of doing agriculture, for instance, uh, with lower energy, with lower machine working in the fields, something like this. So that we have to compare practices, uh, whether one is better than the other. And on the other side, we also try to continue to help people developing, adapting material technology uh, for the environment with material coming from the environment. So that's really something we try to, to do. About the opposition uh, or um, support, uh, you know, it, uh, with the first images I, I showed about the institute in between faculties and labs, it's like if you have a couple married for years and now you have a third guy or lady coming into the couple. And so of course, it is not very comfortable for the old couple with lab and, and faculties. And so that's the main, difficulty we are facing. So, because of course, if you don't discuss enough, if you don't explain enough, what is your, the role of institute? Some of uh, the head of lab say, oh guys, but, but you, you, you're doing what we do in terms of research. So why a new institute and, and the same for education? So what we try to, um, to do is really to have only an added value. And so we start something, we start funding something only if it's supporting something maybe well, already existing or if it's really an added value for everybody, whether in, on the educational um, side or on the research side. Of course, it's uh, very difficult then because it's like, you know, working in the equilibrium, very unstable zone. Uh, the point is that because we have, I mean, we can fund, uh, we can support uh, with money or with people that help us to uh, convince uh, uh, the lab and the, the, the faculties to, uh, to work with us and not against uh, what we, we, we have to propose. But it's not perfect now, but it's much better than it was two years ago. <laughs> Thank you very much for all these questions and the answers. I don't know if we have other people wanting to join the conversation, if you have other questions to ask. If you prefer to write it down in the chat, you can always do uh, through this mean and I can just uh, say it out loud for you if you prefer. Thank you, Kevin, for your <laughs> <laughs> comment. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so
since it's kind of silent, I, I do want to, to give you guys a pat on the back uh, because honestly, th there are very few places that I've seen and I've been trying to pay attention to these sorts of developments. Uh, there are very few places that are, that are doing this so consciously. Um, so good work. Um, and, and I'll be following you guys very closely. <laughs> But, you know, we'll, we'll be spying we had, on you for. But you, you know, we had some inspiration before we started thinking about this institute, and of course, what you do uh, in Stockholm, I mean, was really inspiring for us too with the resilience uh, center. So that's, I mean, you, you, you're right. There is not a lot of place where people try to do that, but in some cases, like you in Stockholm, you you do that for years, and so that's that's uh, of course a nice example for us to follow. Jerome, we should have a long conversation about the Resilience Center. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll need to we'll need to take that offline. I think. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you very much to all of you. If there are no more questions, uh, maybe everyone's starting to get hungry as well. <laughs> that would explain. So, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I think if there is no more question, we can uh, end this uh, very interesting presentation and conversation. And uh, we will circulate all the documents and all the presentations through, um, through the communication team of CVs. So you, you will have access to both the video and, uh, and the PowerPoint presentation.